Yeah, welcome back to Rear Build Series, episode 160. And so I've been doing some work on the Hummingbird. Um, it was nice to get out in the bird and, um, you know, go use it again. And like I said, I was kind of bummed out by the by the PFD that I was, uh, you know, couldn't have that in there the way I wanted it because I'd have to fix the nose. Well, I ended up getting it fixed, so that's good. So I did a couple things here. I changed where the button is for the door. I also added some locking lugs here so that... Um, I can connect to Triton's uh, helipad. So I'm still doing just a couple things here, trying to get this cleaned up. So just do a couple things to uh, finish clean up the Hummingbird, and we'll go take it for a test uh, with the new locking lugs and see how that ends up looking for us. But um, yeah, so let's go ahead and let's save this. Let's go run a test here on the bird and see um, see what's up with that. So I'm going to have to add in um, the tracking system. The, the issue with the Hummingbird is it is very cramped on space. Uh, bird's designed to be very small and so the negative of that is it's tough to um, do some of that stuff. So I'm not going to be able to home to this to uh, Triton but what I can do is still test out the locking lugs. So we're going to go ahead and do that and uh, make sure that system's working. But again, the Hummingbird's really nice because it goes, it has a lot of fuel, 400 something gallons, which is more than uh, the Comorant even. Why did I just do that? Um, and it um, is fast, it goes 230 knots. So um, I might put that button back there. I'm not sure if I like it where it is, but um, we're in the test world here. So let's go ahead and start it up. Yeah, we'll just go over and uh, hook up with um, with Triton. But mainly, what I did here was um, add the locking lugs and a um, couple couple other things that were pretty minor. So I'd like to add on uh, autopilot where I can. Um, you know, currently, if I'm in vertical mode, the oh, heading hold does not um, do anything really. So I kind of wouldn't mind fixing that at some point. But like I said, you know, the main issue with the uh, bird is it um, is very tight on space. Um, and so because it's tight on space, I have to be, um, you know, I can't put it too many features in it because of that space constraint. So. Actually, need to remember to control my prop and keep my throttle up. So, again, a lot of the finesse things, um, you know, you learn about your builds of how they have to be set up. Um, you know, if you haven't flown something in a while, you forget, and that's you know that's true to real life too. Is if you haven't flown a certain type of airplane in a while, you lose some of those finesse items. So uh, we're gonna come down here and we will land on Triton's helipad. And uh, the two locking lugs should lock now, and that will, uh, you know, that will get us going here. So, like right now, I'm trying to figure, trying to get back comfortable. Like I'm spamming on the props, and it's taking me a second to figure out how to set up. So I definitely need to keep myself on the green bar. Um, there we go. But the uh, the bird is. Uh, you know, it was one of the first vehicles I made for Triton. And so um, the nice thing is without a propeller on the front, I can kind of bounce my nose off the crane. It's not as devastating as with Katie did if I hit my nose. I don't have any way to, um, you know, I don't have a camera or anything to align myself, so I kind of have to do it manually. But what I can do is, like, a lot of people don't do this in games. Is that, you know, it, this is how you do real life. You'd use your peripheral vision, which we don't really have. So as you can see, I've turned my head. So I can still look forward. I'm looking at the crane now, and then I'm turning my eyes, and I'm looking at the side. So I'm kind of keeping my alignment with the crane and my forward and back with my peripheral here. And we should be very close to locking here. Let me see where we're at. All right, we are too far forward. Okay, so it looks like the locking lugs are a little bit high. So that's interesting that um, 
they're not attracted to grab that. This is my button for um, setting the locking lugs. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to shut down here. And what I'm going to do is um, I will just manually push this in position. I just want to get it where it needs to be. Um, let me make sure these aren't on release. Uh, release is false. So these have electricity. These, um, you know, those have electricity. So I should hopefully be able to push this forward and get this to lock. Yeah, see, they don't want to come all the way up and grab, so that's interesting to me. So, like, that's right above. So those might, might need to come down one. You know, it is off a little bit, but, um, you know, it shouldn't be that precise. Um, they tend to grab pretty reliably. So it looks like they need to come down one. So I do that on the um, on the bird here, because like those locking lugs are not coming up at all. The ones attached to Triton. Okay, so um, let's grab the bird back, and let's just test this. It's gonna kind of make it look a little funky, I think, but um, it's not the end of the world here. Hmm. Uh, sh I should have. Uh, I've tested that like that. So actually what I want to do is this, I think. So let's do this. Um, let's cut this and that's going to be the same position. Let me see if I can go one position back like that. I'm not sure. That's not bad. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, that's pretty good actually. All right. Um, I just need to merge these up here. All right, so let's test this one out. I think we're just like one block too far away. I kind of actually like. I dig the way that looks. Don't really like the door button. I might put it back there. The problem is I had to put this panel somewhere, and so I had a paint block that was just showing where it was, and so I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see where um, it was supposed to be. So let's go to 10% prop pitch. 10-ish percent prop pitch. I might change this PFD to one of, other, one of Sky's other PFDs that I prefer now. I don't know. It's kind of a civvy version, so I use this one with the blue background, but I do like it, but it's not. Uh... All right, let's go to about oh, 45 degrees wing. We'll head over there here and try to grab on to Triton. Yeah, so the more of these vehicles, the better. You know, again, I don't like to give up on a build. Um, I like to use some of my older stuff. You know, of course, some stuff is just, you know, way obsolete. Um, but, you know, I kind of like to go back and play with builds. And so, um, you know, that's, uh, that's especially, you know, like I've been talking about, you know, having uh, different strengths and weaknesses. Like the strength of this is just demon speed. You know, this has... Um, you know, this goes 230 knots. Um, you know, so this is super fast. You know, the Comorant's nice and fast at 177, but this is, you know, this is a whole number, another Vrijo worth of speed to get places. So this is just ultra fast, and so um, that's fun to use too. And so I like to kind of rotate the builds and get that. So we're gonna do the same thing, peripheral, by looking off at about like a 40, maybe a 30 degree angle off to the, the right there. That will let me kind of align us here. I'm going to put the parking brake on. Um, that will keep us from rolling around on the deck. The uh, wheels in this are not XML edited, so I... Um, Alright, so like you can see, I'm not far enough forward, so now I'm better. There we go. And that grabbed. So, uh, perfect. So they were just one too, um, one too high, and so they weren't grabbing. And I kind of like the look of that, actually, so that's not bad at all. 
Yeah, so that's good. As you can see, alignment is great. Um, the bird is is uh, working well, so it's nice to get that. I don't know why I'm having electrical issues. I have to check that really quick. But um, yeah, nice to get the bird back in. Um, you know, the bird was, like I said, one of the first ones. I'll actually bring up the helicopter. That was my first one. Let me check on this electrical problem and see what's up here. Um, where's battery? Battery, battery is there. Generator is on. I don't know why I'm not making electricity. Okay, so that's something to look at. So let's do that right now before I forget. All right, so a bunch of the systems, like those tracking systems, I will button those up so that they can be released in the workshop, and I'm gonna I'll do a tutorial video before I uh, release them. I'm trying to see how I want to do this. Um, all right, so this here. So let's go. So I want to put that button back where it was. I'm, I'm not digging that there. So I'm going to go like that, and then I want a paint block. And then I want to take a toggle, um, single toggle button like this. And this will go right. Yeah, I want this hidden. I don't like it um, exposed. All right. And then this can all be this color inside. All right, that's that, and then all right, and then, so I'll just do an arrow here. All right, so that just points to where the uh, door is. That tends to be what I do. That way you can easily see it. That looks funky. Yeah, that's funky. Um, there we go. That's better. All right, so that just arrow points to where the um, door latch is. So you can kind of find it a little bit easier. And then so that needs to have uh, this electricity goes from... That's fine. This needs to go f directly from the battery so that you can open the door, then it goes to here, and then this can be deleted off again, and then we'll just grab a, um, grab a block to replace that. Yeah, so that's better. I like the button there better, and then this panel still works here. Uh, let's do this. All right, so that's good. Um, locking system works. So that was really important to me to get that up and running, um, to have a nice locking system. So good. So that uh, puts this back in in the mix. Let's go ahead. Let me find. I'll find the original helicopter that was going to go on um, Triton. Yeah, I probably won't do anything with it, but it's kind of you know nice to kind of look at. Some rough drafts of things it's probably way back here. Probably a bunch of stuff. I, you know, one thing I wanted to do is thin out, thin out what I have in here, my vehicle folder, and back them all up. And then, you know, a lot of stuff is just tests and playing with things. At some point, I want to bring the sub back in. I just haven't been feeling it. So again, you know, it's a lot of work to be done on that, and I'm not really looking forward to doing it. Um, you know, it's not going to be fun. So I kind of wait. Um, until I feel like doing it. So let's see if I can't find this. Um, trying to find the helicopter that I made that was um, initially for Triton. Yeah, so it's probably quite a ways back here. Yeah, I forget what it was called. Let's see if I can't find it here in a reasonable amount of time. I don't want to waste a ton of time just looking for it, but um, it'd be kind of cool to look at, I think. Here it is. Small helo. I could have probably looked up helo, but uh, just a small coax helicopter here. Um, you know, pretty basic. It's um, one, two, three, five seats, 
Winch there. Winch on the side, kind of like Katie. Um, yeah, pretty tiny little helicopter that, um, you know, would have worked with uh, Triton. But, um, you know, pusher prop on it. So, um, you know, it was just kind of a basic proof of concept. So, you know, I didn't really do much with it. Uh, so let's kind of... Um, See, so yeah, I want to do some missions, so let's go ahead and let's uh, I'll load up the career build series save, and we'll go see what we have for missions. Um, I'm going to bring up my to-do list. There's one habit I need to get into is uh, bringing up to-do list before I leave. Um, we're not going to use Katie right now. Katie needs some work. Katie is presently um, a bunch of the systems aren't working right, so I don't want to get into building right now, and so because of that, I don't want to, um, you know, because I don't want to get into building right now, because I've been doing a bunch of building, I want to, um, you know, kind of lay off that for the second. I'll do that off screen. So these people we just dropped off, see if we have any missions on the board. Uh, nothing as present, so let's go ahead and let's um, head back towards. Oh, we could go anywhere really. I'm trying to think what else I want to do. Uh, let's go back and head towards. Uh, I would say. Let's go back to the spy cakes area here. Shouldn't take us long in the bird, so. Now, of course, I've moved everything around, so. So I need to bring up the hummingbirds um, list um, because I almost just forgot. I almost just forgot that I there was an electrical problem I just noticed, so let's check that. Uh, electricity issue. Okay, electricity issue is in there, so that way I can figure that out. Um, I must have just disconnected um, an electrical connection, probably from the alternator, I would say. Probably when I moved the battery. Uh, because this one, as you can see, this one doesn't have any problems, so it was something on the new version that I probably just disconnected. The other thing I could show you, too, is my I made a four-engine version just to see how much extra speed you get. And to add two extra engines, you're really not getting that much extra speed, but, you know, you're, it's a lot of expense, so, just, you know, what I mean by expense is you're, a lot of extra fuel burn, a lot of extra, extra initial cost. Uh, it's got 500 feet here, and um, what's my bearing to is 227, so there are some things that could be added to this that would, are just kind of quality of life things, for example, I could put the autopilot panel in this just because um, oh, 500 feet's dangerous. That's below the stack. If we went straight there, we would have hit it on the way in in the fog. Um, what was I saying? Stand by. Let me just get going here and then. Uh, so I could put the autopilot panel in here because, um, you know, again, this is a small build. I'm hurting on space. Uh, 230. So 2.30, not 21.30, 2.30, there we go, 2.30's in, and, um, you know, the faster you're going, the bigger your turning circle is going to be, so you see how this is taking a long arcing path to get there. Uh, part of that is uh, my yaw limitation in the game, it wants you to yaw more than you would in real life, so like if I start adding yaw, you can see I was right on my heading anyways, that's why it's funky as I intervened. Um, but, you know, like you can see, I can go up to like 60% prop pitch on this. So, you know, talking about prop pitch again, um, as I was kind of talking about it before, um, if you add more gearing, um, say with a fixed pitch prop like you'd have in the boats, um, and you are losing speed, you need more power. Same thing is kind of true on these airplanes. If you are adding more prop pitch and you're losing speed, you need more power if you want to get more speed at that higher prop pitch. Now, that's not uh, necessary, for example. Like in the Cormorant, I want 30% prop pitch to be my best speed, and I want anything above that to be for efficiency's sake. So I wanna, I'm willing to give up speed for fuel efficiency. 
you know, so like I was saying how every vehicle has its purpose. The purpose of this is to be fast. That's why it's so narrow. That's why it's one across. Um, that's why it is twin engine. You know, it is. this has, I think the Cormorant has a flat 12. These have two flat 10s. So this is much more fuel hungry. Um, you know, this has 400 something gallons of fuel. It burns, you can see it's burning fuel pretty quickly. Um, this is designed for speed. That's, this is, this is, this main, this vehicle's main purpose. And so like you can see, um, if I set this up right, you know, I can get around 220, 230 knots. That's its purpose is to be just incredibly fast. And so that's the whole point of this. I, as you can see, I could do some tuning on that, but um, you know, that's the whole point of this is speed. And so, you know, I'm burning a lot of fuel to get this speed. I can also go, again, talking about prop pitch, like see if I go 100%, I do reduce my RPM, but I don't get it as low as say the Cormorant. So this is still burning a lot more fuel than the Cormorant but I'm doing 196 knots. So even at max efficiency, the max efficiency of the Cormorant's down to like 106 knots. This is still doing about almost double what the Cormorant does at max efficiency, but this is, you know, overall less efficient than the Cormorant. So let's go ahead and let's, I'm just gonna take, uh, that's not gonna work. Let's go ahead and start zeroing these out. You know, what I need to do is at some point button up all my autopilots and everything so that I can easily put them in other vehicles. Um, presently, it's kind of a pain. All right, so let's go over here to Spy Cakes or Draymore. Um, I think it's Spy Cakes. Yeah, let's go to Draymore and put this away. Um, I can sleep in the bed and then try to... Um, we'll grab a mission. And then based on what the mission type is, I will figure out what I want to do for... Um, I'll figure out what I want to do for a, uh, what vehicle I want to bring. And so I made sure I took off my parking brake there. So I'm using my pitch kind of like a helicopter to do across the ground movement there. I'm also using it to lose altitude. But the bird works well. Um, bird reasonably complicated. Um, you know, I'll show you the four-engine bird. I don't even know if it runs right now, but um, let's take it for a quick pattern. All right, and then let's put that on. Let's go ahead and I should idle the engine, but I don't really care, so I'm just going to shut it down. And then um, grab that open. All right, so this version is now obsolete, so I have my new version anyways. All right, let's grab the four-engine version. Again, I don't know if it's running right. Um, it was just a quick test. Essentially, I just <laughs> extended the wings, but um, I'll kind of show you how even adding, so that this has four flat tens in it, and this is not much faster than the regular one, um, but you add a lot more complexity, you add a lot more um, fuel burn to not get much extra um, performance and that's actually can be the way of it IRL is you know you don't you don't necessarily get that much more performance um, okay those aren't starting so. all right I'm not gonna bother with this right now but um, I'm just gonna kind of show you that was just kind of a quick test to kind of see oh if I had a more engine what would happen all right let's go ahead and let's sleep and grab a mission uh, I fell down the stairs so drain more you sleep up on a hay bale up here so Yeah, see what we get for a mission. I have override time on, that's why it's not going tonight. Uh, River Barge has gone missing without an exact location. Let's look at that. Okay, so it's going to be in here. So it's one of these inlets. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quick. Um, be nice to do a little bit of that. I'm trying to think what I want to use for this. I'm. You know what I think I'm going to use? I think I'm going to use Remora. Yeah, I'm going to use Remora. I think that'll be kind of cool. So I'm just going to teleport over to um, a dock. We'll teleport here. Just instead of me flying, you know, that's all I would be doing is... Or running, you know. Uh, my chopper is still over here. I didn't want to launch another 
um, land vehicle to go because I haven't brought that one back yet. All right, so Remora we did some work on. Um, it now has that, so I figured, you know, it'd be nice to get this in. Let me see if I can make the jump. This is going to be a hairy long jump to make. Yeah, nope, nope. I kind of screwed the jump up. I forgot I can't get up there with that um, sitting there like that, but I can do that. All right, so this now has a um, waypoint system, which is very nice. This is uh, helpful. So we're going to start by this inlet here. So I'm going to set the waypoint. Um, let's go ahead and put up the light bar, and let's get out of here. Oh, why is that screw not turning? Ugh, coming back. Something's up with... I'm still going fast, though. Still in 50 knots on one screw. Alright, what is up? I probably... I imagine it's electrical. Often, if you have an issue like this, it's electrical. Um, those are... Starter... Starter goes off of electric relay. So one, what I think I, so the only thing I changed here was the systems button. So something that used to be controlled by systems, I probably neglected to fix. So let's make sure. So that is done by, that's master power. So let's go in here and fix this really quick. So um, if you remember, I need to switch out that gauge. So um, it used to be one was the, um, uh, two was systems, one was master power. As you can see, one was master power. This was systems two. And so something is up. Um, why do I have a... Oh, that's going to systems copy. And so what is three? Three is, uh, is the um, port engine. So I should be going down here. This should be my PID for port alternator. Um, okay, so I bet I have... Uh, where is it? Panel desync. Right here. So this 2 here uh, needs to be a 1 now. Okay, so that fixes that. Let's save that. Yeah, let's just do that one. Alright, so that is good. Um, that should work now. So that was a simple fix there that, um, you know, I just forgot to change that out. So it, um, you know, that didn't uh, get fixed initially. Oh, there we go. There we go, that's better. Um, let's go ahead and let's enter in our waypoint here. It's a little bit funky with these on the side, but again, I don't need to operate them often, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, here we go. Alright, so I'm going to go, so where is it? Right there. So that's bearing 2. It's gonna. It's reading to where we're going there, so I'm just going to straighten that up. All I need to do, the number is irrelevant. Uh, the, where the arrow is pointing is all I care about. You know, so again, this, you know, this does around 70 knots, so of course it'd be faster to do an air vehicle, but like I said, you know, people often get stuck in a rut in the game where, you know, everybody and their brother is, um, just uses helicopters for everything, and so I kind of like to still use other stuff. So, but, uh, nice to have a navigation system. Definitely makes it better. But yeah, so um, you know, like if you see, um, if I turn off the left here, the, the needle will move opposite and tell me where to go. So I pretty much can just go by that, and then I can actually use my compass ball if I wanted and kind of see. Okay, we're a little bit south of east and um, kind of go with that, but, you know, uh, it's it's nice to have different levels of um, complexity in your different vehicles and different levels of amenities and, you know, conveniences like this. This wor is pretty simple. I want this to be simple. Um, you know, I just want it to be a simple little boat that, um, you know, just does its job well, and uh, that's, you know, that's what I want out of this. I don't want this to be super-duper complex. Um, you know, I have plenty of other super duper complex vehicles. I don't need that. I need this to be um, simple and inexpensive and operate well. So this should be pretty 
This shouldn't take too long to wrap up, and then I can uh, put it in the workshop. All right, so, you know, like with this, I have no clue how long it's going to take me. Um, these are the types of things that, you know, with a simplistic vehicle like this, you just don't know. Like, you know, I was telling, I was talking about how you can kind of tell by the needle movement. See how I made a pretty big turn and the needle barely moved? That's telling me that I'm uh, a reasonable distance away. If I made a tiny movement and the needle makes a big move, that tells me I'm really close. So you can kind of home in a little bit and gives you a rough estimate of your distance. But, uh, you know, we're shooting across pretty fast, doing 60 knots. You can see that's that island there, so we can dead reckon we're already probably about, oh, here. You know, so we're about a third of the way over there. And it doesn't take us very long. But, um, yeah, so I'm happy with this. This is a cool little boat. Um, turned out nice, nicely. You know, it's using um, raw water cooling, which, you know, as long as I don't get over 100 degrees, I'm not going to damage my engines. Plus, I could always, you know, put it back in the workbench if need be. Um, you know, like uh, out regular outboard motors use raw water cooling. They just take in, um, just take in, in salt water. You know. You'd have sacrificial metals in there to... Uh, you know, try to keep the, um, in my understanding, you have sac sacrificial anodes in there to keep the corrosion limited to the anodes. So you, you kind of put a, uh, you, often they're zinc, not always, but, um, you know, and they bolt them to the hull or the propeller or, you know, different parts of the boat. And the corrosion uh, attacks that first. And so if you keep swapping out your um, sacrificial anodes, you know, you hope that that uh, keeps the corrosion to your main hull to a minimum. All right, so I can start to see in the distance there, I can start to see the mountain ranges, so we're getting there pretty quick here. And so, you know, we, again, kind of test what I was talking about here. We can kind of make a little bit of a turn here, and you can see it's hard to tell, but you can see the needle is moving a little bit faster, uh, you know, or it's showing more deviation. The closer you get to it, the more deviation you're going to get. So, like, right there, that's the inlet. And so we're starting to get close. So you'll notice when I'm right on top of it, a tiny little movement will really move the needle because your relative uh, position from it is pretty, um, you know, your relative distance from it is pretty small. So a small turn uh, equals a large number of degrees. So it, um, you know, like, so it's right in this inlet is where the waypoint is. So like, as you can see now, as I turn just a little bit, that needle is moving perceptibly more because as we get closer to it, um, the relative angle, as you can see, is larger. So, uh, but it's nice having this needle system. It's just really, um, it's going to make this a much more usable vehicle. Again, this, you know, this was pretty much useless in the fog, and that's why I did it. Was, you know, you have a foggy day. This vehicle, which is perfect for this this type of weather conditions, is useless. Let me just check something really quick. Um, okay, I just want to make sure I didn't have. Oh, I do have override weather on. Okay, I want to make sure I had override weather off. You go ahead and take override time. I was leaving that on just so we, we didn't get too much night stuff. But I haven't done a night in a while, so if I get a night, that's not too bad. So we have two inlets to check. We have this one, and we have that one. Um, start looking now, and pretty much I can look right up, and if I don't see it, I know it's in the other one. So I won't do too much zooming in here because of the, um, you know, it's going to probably make people nauseous, make you know, make everybody seasick. But, um, you, okay, so see, we're coming right past the waypoint. You'll see how it's moving very quickly now because we're close to it, and we're going past it, so that tells us we're going past it. All right, so it looks like it's not here. Let's go check the other inlet. Um, let me check the map really quick. So, the, you know, it could be as far up as the bridge. So let's actually go in a little bit and check it. Um, instead of if I cut cut off and go the other way and it ends up being in here, uh, just a bunch of waste of time. So. so it could be all the way up to the bridge. So as, if I can see up to the bridge, then I'll turn around. You see we've almost used half fuel. Again, this because of the speed on this, this thing eats fuel like going out of style. So one thing I could do is up gear it and try to, I'm, I'm having space issues, so I can see if I can up gear it and down rev it. Um, 
I want to maintain this speed. I don't want to go faster than 70 knots, but, um, you know, I might want to uh, get a little bit of fuel efficiency in here. This is meant to be a short vehicle. Like, we're going, that's a considerable distance, um, you know, so I don't want to don't want to chop too much. I kind of want to make you say, hey, you know, I, if I use remora, it's going to cost me some fuel. You know, again, it needs to have some limitations. Okay, so it appears it's not in this channel. Uh, I'm just checking all the way around the corner here. Yeah, so it's not in this channel. Let's, let's uh, do a quick spin around here. <laughs> this thing's a lot of fun. It's just, it's, it's fast. And ooh, why is my rudders, my rudders weren't doing anything for a second there. It's nice and fast, and as you can see, it's just it, this is a fun little uh, skiff. So this worked well. I'm happy with this. I would like to do the get the outboard going too. You know, the more toys for Triton, the better, in my in my opinion. You know, I like swapping out the Hummingbird for Katie for um, the Cormorant, and like I was talking about, you know, each one has their pluses and minuses, and uh, you know, it gives you a reason to use something else. If I had two helicopters and they have equal performance yeah you might say oh i want to use the other one but you know you say oh, well you know katie that's a long distance katie doesn't have a lot of fuel so i'm going to be run i'm going to be running low on fuel and i'm going to be going out there at 130 something knots uh or i could take the cormorant which is going to have zero issues with um fuel because it has like 360 gallons and it's a nice speed of 177 knots and if I really need to go fuel efficient I can and then you have the hummingbird which burns a ton of fuel uh, but it's really really fast you know it's another 40 something knots faster than the cormorant but it can't land in the water and so but it can hover you know and it has no winches so you have to actually kind of dip the um, dip the back ramp into the water so, you know, uh, the hummingbird is not, it, it's actually not usable at all in heavy seas because you have to dip that ramp in the water. Well, you can't do that if, um, you know, the waves are going to hit the hummingbird, it'll crash the plane. So, you know, they all have their pluses and minuses, and that really makes you want to choose different vehicles and choose the right tool for the right job. And I don't want to build a jack of all trades, master of none. I want to build something that's a master of its particular domain that's super good at one thing or a couple things and it it has a lot of downsides and so you have to choose what you want to do but yeah I'm enjoying running this this uh, boat like again it's, it's very easy like I said to just say you know what I'm gonna use a helicopter every time and so um, you know this really if this was slow if this did like 20 knots I couldn't take this it would just take forever and so this going 70 knots is it's this is viable. I can use this. So. All right. So it appears uh, I think we have a. It's either a fire or a flare. I still have not been able to see. It looks like oh, it's hard to tell, man. I think it's a flare. So somebody put a formula up. I'll have to look at for um, making proportional throttle. I might use. I think it's a fire. Yeah, it's a fire. 100%. I was gonna. Ooh, don't hit this dude, this poor Johnny. He's got one eye already. He's already been damaged. Um, there's my Fire X. Fire X. Okay, let's get on there. Hello, sir. You guys look awfully calm for there being a uh, fire in here. Okay, so let's go. Um, see if I can. Yep. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let me uh, go down through here. Hello, ma'am. You guys are awfully calm for this being a... Hello, this is a lot of crap. So I have to go down the front. Okay. Another eye patch. What are you guys doing here that you're losing eyes? At, at You guys are losing eyes at an alarming rate. Do not follow me, please. Uh, oh, come on. Yep. All right. Well, she's down there now, which is not convenient. But um, I can't shut this door. Just, just stop following me, please. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, fire is still on. Okay, now the f I got water. The water's going down now. I couldn't get the water to go down the hatch there. It's going down. It just it didn't look like it. I couldn't tell. Okay. Oh my. Oh, so now that's just a oh, that's an interesting bathroom there. Imagine if you had to crawl in to go to the bathroom. Oh, come on, man. 
Um, yeah, so remember, um, this holds 10 people. This has actually more seating than, um, than something like Katie. Um, this actually has a considerable amount of seating. I don't know if there's somebody trapped under my boat or what. See, I love how, how well it works with people. Um, I love how well it works with the people following you. Like, they literally just follow me right up the ladder. Oh, see, like, you have to worry about people's weight. Um, if you remember back to the Rigeau video where um, I couldn't get Rigeau to unroll because all the people were laying incapacitated on the roof and I had to get them out of there. Um, you know, the, the people have weight and that's something to consider. So it, it makes you, it informs your decisions, uh, your build decisions. Uh, this, so this, this uh, emergency has a little story, it, um, like two boats crashed together, I think, if I remember right. I was wondering why my nav lights aren't on, and I remembered that my nav lights don't come on with systems. They come on with, um, I think, when I get on the helm, which I actually kind of want to do systems, I think, so I might change that. So there's a lot of people there. So this is actually a, a money, money one here. And follow me, please, sir. Thank you. So I need to count. So this holds 10. So, that, you know, another reason why this is pretty useful build is it um, just has a really good capacity um, oh you didn't follow me huh well you're my least favorite person right now you're gonna get fire extinguished as soon as I get the opportunity I wish I could just kind of give him a little slap with my um, Ooh, look at this uh, minor piracy is going on here now look at that um, little piracy here. I get all excited for the simple, it's the simple pleasures in life, like free health packs. Again, I have like $800,000. I don't really need to be stealing health packs, but uh, why not? Okay, so let me count my people. So we have three, six, seven. Let's check the mission. Uh, nine. Ooh, there's a couple more in there. Um, I could move the boat closer, but um, I don't mind taking a swimmy poo. Should probably get rid of my winter coat while I'm not up here. It's not good RP. And oh yeah, the two that I that got dumped down here. So come on up there, honey. Uh, let me see if I can grab this person. Yep, got you. It's like a super villain with that red eye patch. Let's get up there. All right, put you on deck for right now, and then I need to grab this person here that's being stubborn. All right, there we go. And then you hurt? You are. Okay. I like your mutton chops there, sir. All right, did you jump in the drink? Oh, you did. Good friend. You're a good friend. I like that. Save me some uh, annoying nonsense. All right, um... So yeah, so we have nine people, so we have one extra seat on this. So this is, uh, that's cool. Is uh, again, you know, this has a good, um, good use case for this boat here that we have. Kind of want to get that raft, and I don't care about the raft really. Let me see if I can get a little higher and get the raft in. There we go. That's a good picture. Uh, I need to. Uh, my screenshot on the right to clear. All right, good. All right, so let's get out of here. Let me figure out where I want to go here. Um. Holt has fuel. We need fuel. Um, so uh, that, I don't know if I can get that there. Yeah, it doesn't really have fuel where I can get to it, though. Um, I think that's going to be where we have to go. Uh, what about here? That's that's a buy. Diesel gantry, yeah, you can sell there. Um, all right, let's go to Holt. Um, we need to watch our fuel a little bit here. Yeah, this is a reasonably shallow draft, so I can get close to things, not have to worry about bottoming out. Uh, my heater's on. Um, hmm. Oh, I have a uh, heater's temperature sensor, so it must be cold. But we have to watch that fuel. As you can see, fuel is precipitously going down. So I might have to 
put some gearing on this. I want this to be a uh, pretty useful boat. It's not bad. Again, I want it to have that limitation, but um, if I can get the RPS down a little bit, what am I... can't see my RPS. I don't have an RPS gauge on here, but uh, if I get my RPS down, uh, I want to keep the speed the same, so that's more gearing. So, um, again, I'm at 100% throttle. And um, so the only way to get my, to reduce my fuel burn is to reduce RPS, and the only way to keep the same speed with a reduction in RPS is to use more gearing. And so I'm gonna need another gearbox. Currently, I think it has uh, maybe one. If it only has one, that's a bit that's a no-brainer to put a second one on there. Uh, yeah, I think it only has one, so it's a uh, even going of like a four to one. Would dump that like you can see you can watch that gauge is just falling as we're going here. Um, once we bit, I'm gonna actually slow down now. I want to save a little bit of fuel here. I want to get some efficiency in. Like we didn't, you heard the uh, RPMs drop quite a bit, um, and we didn't lose all that much speed. Uh, one thing I'd like them to add is presently you have to use a button to open these unless they changed it. Um, it'd be nice if you could do it via radio. Um, so you can control the uh, bridges via radio. But, um, yeah. So, um, just dead reckoning here. We're coming in past the volcano now. Uh, our, where are we? Is there another volcano right here? Yeah, so we're coming up here, maybe? No, we just passed the bridge. Where are we? We just passed the bridge here. Uh, volcanoes. What am I looking at? I thought I saw a volcano. Oh, th it's this one up here. So I'm looking at this one. Okay. I want to take the left path. So you can see how much more slowly our fuel is going down now. So just slowing down that little bit is saving us a good bit of fuel. So it's worth doing. So I'm going to take the left path here to Holt. Uh... I'm going to walk around and just heal people. I need to be careful. This boat is uh, reasonably tippy, so I don't want to be too rambunctious with this um, while I'm running around. I don't want to get bumped off. I do have an auto-stop feature on this if I fall off a uh, kill switch. So, so yeah, we're save, uh, We're really using a lot less fuel. You know, max throttle was a lot of fuel, so we only lost about f 15 knots. And we're saving a ton of fuel. So that's not bad at all. That makes me think I might not even uh, play around with trying to increase fuel efficiency because um, it really doesn't take that much throttle reduction to gain a ton of extra um, fuel efficiency. So we're coming up this channel here right now. Um, yeah, we haven't made the turn yet because this is the windmill there. And then we're going to go up to Holt. Trying to make an executive decision here. I can't recall my... I can't recall the boat at Holt. Um, there's no land vehicles at south, so there's no point in going to south to recall the vessel. So I just think I'll kind of keep doing what I'm doing here. We'll just go up to Holt. I won't be able to get diesel. That's an issue. Um, yeah, see, this is an issue. Is I can't spawn anything here um, to get diesel. And it's not close enough. This is a sell point. I can't buy diesel here. So that's obnoxious. Um, but I can get rid of the boat, go in there, and respawn it there. Um, so I think I'm going to go to south because I'm not going to be able to ref I don't think I'm going to be able to refuel here because I can't drag the hose far enough to hook up. And so if I go to the south here, I, I'll buy this for 50 grand. It's pretty cheap bring the people up, get rid of them, and then even if I just respawn the boat or bring up a different craft, uh, how are we on time? Yeah, we're about on time, so we'll end it there anyways, but that will allow me to spawn something different, like the Cormorant, to get out of there in a, in a speedy way. So let's go to south. We'll buy south. Um, so one of the builds I made was the portable um, container mover. I showed you that one of them. Uh, it's that little tiny truck that it hooks the two... Um, it splits the parts and you hook the two parts to the different sides of the container and the benefit of that is I can load that into the hangar under um, 
you know, under the deck of Triton. And so Sawyer South, there's no place to spawn vehicles. And so since I can't spawn a vehicle, I can't spawn, say, a container shifter. So I can unload the ship, but then I can't move the containers to get new ones and to get rid of the old ones. And so, um, you know, I need to bring one with me. And so that's kind of the point of that. You know, we could probably use a little bit of money. I've been burning some money here, um, but I'm not hurting that bad. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, so I'm not all that concerned about money. Be nice to, you know, again, I'm trying not to do, I'm trying to do a good balance of building and doing rescues and missions and stuff. Um, I've been kind of in the workbench doing a bunch of building lately just because things need to be fixed and updated and it's getting there. Um... You know, I want to get a bunch of those modules out to you guys so that I can do some tutorials on how to do things like the radio tracker and stuff like that. But, um, you know, a lot of that stuff takes me time just because I need to button it up, get it working perfectly, kind of kind of figure out exactly how I want it to be keyed and everything else. And then um, once that's going, um, plus, you know, I, you know, I... I you know, if you, you know, people will often complain about the devs breaking something when they make something new, like a new part. Well, you know, that's me with the Katie did right now. Katie did has a bunch of systems broken because I, I changed a bunch of systems. So I made some changes and as a result, you know, some, a bunch of things broke. And so I need to uh, fix Katie up. And so that's all off screen stuff. Okay, we're close to that, but we're not going to hit it. Okay. So, yeah, so this was nice uh, to take a boat. You know, like, a lot of people are afraid to take the boats these long distances and think they need a boat that's a hydrofoil that goes 100 knots, but it doesn't really take that long. You know, of course, we're going 55 knots. This is a fast boat, but Frigio does 45. Would have taken us, uh, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 more minutes, I think. You know, there's often some overestimation on how long things really take to do, but, um, you know, again... Definitely, we really cut the fuel down, the fuel usage down. And it was like I could visually see it dropping the whole time, and now, you know, we've used about 10 gallons to, uh, maybe 15 gallons to get from the rescue to here. And we used, um, you know, the remainder, which is, what was that, 75? No, it was 85 gallons to get out here. I think it's over here, so let's actually get, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe be careful, I'll slam the beach. See if I can get these people. This is going to be like herding chickens or, or herding cats to try to get all these people um, out. Excuse me, what's my, what is that? Oh, huh, my backup battery didn't get merged, so I have no backup battery. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 All right, let's get some of these people follow me. Um, one of them follow me, apparently. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, just jump. W let's try this backward and jump, see if they follow me that way. They don't. Do I have somebody on me? I do. I have somebody on me. Okay, um... Alright, so nine people here, that's going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 18,000. What do you, do you have, it looked like that person had like some sort of like Halloween mask on or something. Just, it's just their face, apparently. Alright, so I'm going to take a picture of all these people. There's Dr. Evil there with the eye patch. Um... Quite the rescue there. All right, let's grab some peeps here. Um, follow, 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 follow. I don't want to have to do this follow again, so I'm going to kind of be careful and not really be too rambunctious here. I want to kind of... That's a good one. I did leave somebody behind, too. you got to be kidding me here. There's one straggler there. Annoying. Come on, man. Get with the program. You know, it'd be cool if you had a voice line and it was like, follow me. Uh, like ARC, you had whistles. 
And it'd be kind of cool if you could go, follow me, and then everybody in the vicinity would follow you. But I could see them kind of like, like, see, this one's not running. This one's sliding. This one's, this guy has roller skates on. There he goes. Um, yeah, it'd be kind of cool if you could do a follow me. Um, the only issue you might have is, um, you know, they would, uh, maybe they'll get, have issues. Can you run amongst distraction? All right, let's uh, find the hospital here. Um, I think it is, yeah, it's over here. It's in the fishing village. Ooh, going through these trees, I'm worried about losing people. I think we'll be all right, but I am, uh, it's a little bit to the right here. I'm afraid if one of them stops following me, I'm gonna have to try to go play Marco Polo here in the trees and find them. And again, they don't say, that would actually be cool. Instead of having a follow me, you go Marco and they go Polo to find them. That would be hilarious. Um, there's a voice line. They do have a new audio engineer. So where is it? Right here. Okay, that's it there. All right, so there's the uh, doctor. I was seeing if it was Beehive Lady. It is not. She has a different hair. Do this one. Dun, 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 dun. Are you all in? You all in? You all in? Okay, thank you, people. So that was a good one. I enjoyed that one. That was a lot of peeps. Let's go. Um, I'll run over there. It won't take me long running. I kind of walked over there, a bunny hop even, just because the. Um, took a while because I didn't want to get running because I was afraid I was going to lose people. And then I was going to have to turn around and go back. Um, so purchasing the island is here at one of these houses. So I was almost considering doing that on the way over, but again, I didn't want to, people were losing health, I didn't want to lose the money, and I didn't want to lose anybody. But uh, yeah, that was a fun little mission. Um, it was nice to get um, Remora out, and as you can see, um, fuel-wise, it worked. You know, we're going to have to put it in the workbench, um, but that's, you know, there's no place to fuel here, so I kind of consider it, you know, I could even, if I wanted to, I could pull a jerry can and... Um, I could stick a jerry can in, um, you know, as long as we have a workbench, we can get in. So that was another reason to make money is um, for um, the ability to have bases. Where is the buy on this island? Um, let me find it here. Okay, so it is in... Okay, where am I? I am... These are the houses. So it's this one here. It's the middle house. Where is the buy icon? Is it these? It's these three. Uh, where's the buy? No, it is over here. What? That's just where it shows on the map. I, I think it's right here. I'm flying just because that annoyed me. Um, okay. And I don't want to waste your time. All right. So let's. I'm going to put this away. And then um, I think we're, we're definitely good on this mission in this episode. That was a good mission. I enjoyed using this. Um, Again, found something I needed. I need to fix that. Um, I need to fix the, uh, what do you call it? The um, backup battery. Come on, give me some forward thrust here so I can turn. I want to do a 360 here. There we go. So I need to work on that thrust. Somebody gave uh, me a formula. I'll try that out see if how that works for me. It's essentially an incremental, um, it's a formula that um, it actually probably won't work um, with the way I have this set up, but I'm not sure. I'll have to see. Um, let me see, can I, workbench is right there, so I'm just going to get close here. Um, essentially, the faster you go, the faster your throttle changes. I, I don't know, I'll figure out how I want this to do, or, or the opposite, um, I don't know. All right, so that is good. Let me just merge this really quick while I remember it here. That's a quick fix. Uh, save that to Remora. All right, so that was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, it was nice to get, you know, out of the same, you know, being stuck in a rut of using the same vehicles. It was nice to get Remora out and actually show that's a useful craft. Uh, and it is a useful craft now that I can track a waypoint, which I couldn't do before. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I will see you in the next one.